Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today we're going to be testing and possibly replacing the positive crankcase ventilation valve on the Subaru. Let's get started. I've been watching Mr. Subaru 1387's YouTube channel and he has pointed out that a common failure point for uh, engines in general, but also something to look for with Subarus, is the positive crankcase ventilation valve. So again, this is about a $15, $20 part. Got it off of Amazon. They had it in stock. It's not going to expire. I can always throw it into my uh, tool bag if I'm not using it today. But basically, it's going to be a straw a tube, and inside it is a ball bearing. Now, I don't know how well the microphone's picking that up, but it sounds like a uh, spray paint can. It's got a ball in there that will rattle. When the pressure down below is high enough, it will lift that ball out of the way and allow the positive pressure to be vented back into your um, air intake side. So all that to say, I'm going to go ahead and get to pull, possibly clean if necessary, but confirm functionality, confirm rattling, of the existing valve. Uh, my car has about 75,000 miles on it. Again, 2018 Gen 4. I'm pretty sure I bought it with about 43,000, 45,000 on the clock. I would imagine, I don't have uh, any service history on this, that it has not been replaced. So it is cheap insurance, 15, 20 bucks. Again, I'll throw it in the toolbox if it's not gonna be used now. But um, I want to make sure that I can get to it. I'll at least know where it is. We'll make sure it's functioning. Again, clean it if we need to. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is loosen this guy and this guy up there. We're going to get this out of the way. And I believe this is the hose that it connects to. And it's going to be that guy right there. So it should be a 19 millimeter. We will confirm as we get closer. So this is a quick presentation on the idea of the uh, positive crankcase ventilation valve. And I feel the production value uh, reflects that. But basically what it allows the system to do is when the bottom end of your engine builds up enough pressure, it can burp into the top part of your engine. If that were to fail, you're going to get this. So I wiped this down, it's all dry. If I were to line that up and keep that sealed, it will burp a little bit and start leaking a little bit of fluid around the edges, right? Because you're transferring the pressure inside the bottom up to the top, it can't fight the pressure of the water coming in, so it has to go the path of least resistance, which is gonna be around the seam. In this case, there's no gasket. In your engine, there are gaskets everywhere. So you have your rear seal, you have your head gasket, you have a bunch of different places that are designed to keep the pressures in place. Should the pressures get high enough, they're not built for or rated for that uh, amount of pressure and you're gonna start having some failures. You're gonna have fluids going where they're not supposed to or you're going to have seals no longer exist. So making sure that your PCV valve is functional is going to help prevent any kind of damage to your engine. So with a six in one screwdriver, this guy is the correct size for the worm gear here. And make that nice and loose. Do the same up here. Okay. I believe there may be a hose somewhere back here that I have to remove as well. Uh, that's right, it's this guy. Um, actually, that's, that's okay. Maybe it is. So. While we're back here, we can look for any kind of rust corrosion, um, stuffing, anything like that with parts rattling, everything seems okay. We'll be going after this guy. I also bought the hose. Um, this seems pliable enough. So let's see how well that holds up. 
That slips right off, which is good. Bottom side slips off as well. So what you'll do is leave this unoccluded, blow into it, and then cover it as you're blowing. If the frequency changes, if the pitch changes, then you know that it is not occluded until you occlude it. So this hose should be good. It's still pretty malleable. Um, I'm not going to replace it. I do have the hose with me. I don't see a manufacturer date anywhere on it, but um, that's fine. We do have some writing on there in case you need it. But at this point, that should be a 19 millimeter. We're gonna need an extension, probably on an extension. And again, we are going after this guy right here, which is what the hose connected to. So I'm gonna put a 19 on that, pull it out, give it a shake. So we're gonna need quite a bit of reach to get down on there. I wonder if my socket is not deep enough. Let's find out. Be sure to drop your socket along the top of the engine. That's good. Um, okay. So I confirmed it is a 19, but you're going to be better off with a deep well socket versus your standard one. So... We have our 19 deep well socket, and we're going to attempt to get that on there. All right. Okay, and there is our old PCV valve. We got a little bit of dirt and stuff on there. We'll address that. A little bit of corrosion. Welcome to the Rust Belt again, Ohio. I give it a shake and it does seem to be working. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this guy up and put it right back into place. So I had some carb cleaner sprayed it in there and covered both sides and just kept rocking it back and forth. It now moves quite a bit freer. You can hear it a lot easier. And I just covered both ends, rocked it back and forth, and you can see there's a little bit of buildup in there. So um, I know this one works. There's no point in replacing something that works. I know I have the part with me cleaned it out so it's going to be better than it was and we'll go ahead and put it back in and keep the other part for when i need it quite a bit better clearance this way always start a bolt by hand, give it two or three rotations, and then slowly start adding more uh, torque and leverage to it. So I don't want to start this with the socket. I absolutely don't want to start that with a power tool. If the threads are going to be dorked, I want them dorked under hand pressure, hand torquage versus a leverage bar. and especially a power tool, because power tool don't care. You squeeze the trigger, 
it's going to spin. So we want to make sure that we get everything lined up and seated properly before we tor torque it too far. So that one's seated. I can no longer do it by hand. So there was some corrosion on it. I showed you the ring before. I tightened it down to that point. Um, this is the first time I bothered to look. Right here and right there are the spark plugs. And honestly, they don't seem too precariously perched like the internet would have you believe. But possibly it's the other side that's the issue. Anywho, so we're going to go ahead and button this back up. Okay, and last we have our hose. Clearly by the orientation, we have a 90 degree bend here. That's gonna be the top side. This one's gonna be down to the bottom. You can thread your hand back behind the intake easily enough. I'm gonna start with the bottom. Putting on the bottom first allows me to pivot this around, which is gonna be more advantageous than the other way around. So we're good to go. All right, so it turns out we ordered the positive crankcase ventilation valve for no reason. Uh, I have 75,000 miles on the clock with this guy. It was a little gummy, but it did not need to be replaced. So a little bit of a uh, expense saved there, but simple enough to get to uh, from my research online. It seems like other cars are a little more difficult. This one seems to be a little more straightforward. Uh, it can lead to some oil consumption issues and uh, blown seals and stuff like that. So simple enough to double check and easy enough to replace should you need to as well. Uh, again, from what I've seen, the manufacturer recommends every 30,000 miles go ahead and check it and or replace it, whichever one you prefer. So um, this was just a quick walkthrough on how to get to that and how to replace it should you need to. So. Appreciate you guys stopping by as always. This is outside the target demographic. I will catch you guys in the next video.